Hi friends, let's talk about tutorial trap. What's that, how to get out of it and how to recognize that you are falling into the tutorial rabbit hole. So what is tutorial trap? I will give you my own example. Back then, when I was learning programming, there wasn't so much video courses, so I used books mostly, but that's about the same. So I learned some C programming basics in university, but I didn't understand actually what I am doing back then. Later, when I got a job in IT company, I spent some time working as technical field engineer, then decided that I could like to become programmer, and C was looking about the right choice to pick, because I already was kind of familiar with some basics, so I took a C programming language book. I don't know how much time I spent with this book, but I learned all of it, learned <laughs> with huge air quotes. I just read this book from the beginning to the end and followed all the code examples there. So I finished this book and started to look around and thinking what's next. So I picked a quite huge book about C++ programming language, finished that as well. Does it sound already familiar? <laughs> You took one tutorial, then looking for the next one to learn more new things, new frameworks, new programming languages. While you are following tutorial, it feels that you are learning. I spent long hours with those books, but that didn't really click for me. And I never was feeling that I'm ready to apply for a job as programmer. So I was thinking maybe I'm not smart enough for programming. And frankly, C and C++ are not the most fun programming languages. And I just never was really passionate uh, to program embedded systems where those languages were widely used. Those are, I don't know, some payment devices, uh, automated uh, selling machines and so on. Kind of boring stuff. Guess what I did next? <laughs> of course, <laughs> I get another book. This time to learn Java. <laughs> I still have this book and uh, it's well written and I even got online course based on this book. So again, learn it, follow the tutorials and I was feeling smart while I was learning. But as soon as I finished the book, I wasn't sure what to do next. So but currently I'm working as iOS developer. So somehow I solved this problem and <laughs> I like to help you to solve this problem as well if you feel kind of lost in this learning. So what I did, I started to think what I am doing wrong. And I recognized that all the time while I was learning, I didn't have a clear goal and plan in my mind. Sure, I wanted to become programmer, but that was more like wishful thinking. So firstly, I needed more detailed plan for that. Another problem that I recognized, almost uh, all what, is, what I was learned, I just forgot because I did didn't apply that knowledge on real projects. As soon as I finished a tutorial or book, I forgot what I was learned. I was blaming my memory first, but guess why I can build iOS table views or collection views almost without thinking now? Is it because I finally found really good course or tutorial about them? No, of course not. That's because I created a lot of them. I created plenty of screens using table views in my own test projects and all the client apps. So, repetition. Repetition is sister of learning, something like that. I'm not strong in English sayings. <laughs> so, I recognized uh, clearly that I should apply the learning on real projects to deeply understand and at least partly memorize what I learned. Maybe that sounds oblivious for you. I'm happy if it is so. <laughs> then you are good, but it wasn't so clear for me back then when I was learning. And I still see a lot of questions in uh, Twitter or Instagram DMs, like uh, I learned uh, Python and JavaScript, what should I learn next? Start building your own projects, guys. Do not fall in endless tutorial rabbit hole. As soon as I realized that uh, learning is going to nowhere, I started with plan. What I would like to achieve. I know that I like to build iOS apps, but that time I was really passionate by all the Apple ecosystem. I got my first iPhone and so on. So I wanted to build iOS applications and I wanted to 
work remotely, to be able to travel whenever I like and so on. So this time I started to learn iOS development with clear goal in mind. I wanted to build few portfolio apps which will help me to get freelance clients, maybe to make some money if I will be lucky in App Store. Possibility to work remotely and travel whenever I like was really high in my priority list, so my focus was freelancing. Because own app development business is <laughs> not easy and uh, it's actually better to learn and get paid while you are learning. <laughs> as freelancer, so I took my chance and started freelancing as soon as I was able to finish any project. So I would like to repeat that once more. If you are learning programming right now, ask yourself, do you have clear goal in mind? What would you like to build while you are learning? What will be the outcome from this tutorial? Is that up for your portfolio or you are planning to build your own website? For example, I am planning to use React and uh, build my website for my portfolio. Sounds like good goal for me. But if you don't know yet what exactly you are planning to do and uh, this is not your first tutorial, then there is high risk that you are falling into this tutorial rabbit hole. Keep your end goal in mind and you will not feel lost during the learning. So set your goal. For example, get full-time job as Android developer or become iOS freelancer or build your own SaaS business based on web app, whatever. Then create actionable plan working backwards from your goal and start execute on it. After that, when you will see next tutorial sale on Udemy to get few hundred uh, of learning hours for 10 bucks, you will know. Do you need that course or it is just a waste of your time and money? Don't get me wrong, tutorials are really great. Uh, it's a great way to learn new skills. I have yearly subscriptions to access two tutorial sites. I still prefer to pick tutorial to learn from them when I'm looking in some new uh, SDK or API. Documentation is good if you like to check some details, but tutorials works better for me at least. But uh, I never just learning without end goal in mind. I always have some practical reason for following tutorial. If you like to know more details how I learn in iOS development, then check out my story, how I become self-taught developer. Yes, I have a computer science degree, but I learned nothing useful for my current job in university. So I learned iOS de development on my own from internet and tutorials and books. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Those are right below the like button. <laughs> Hope this was helpful. And if you will decide to subscribe to Do Not Miss the next video, I will highly appreciate that. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Bye.